Hello everyone. Recently I've found out that a lot of people got the game during the pandemic, around 2019 to 2020, which means a lot of the early Splatoon 1 metas were something many people didn't get to experience, and there's not a lot of footage documenting what those metas were like. So today, I'm going to be going over the early patches, from 1.0 to 1.4. This is Splatoon 2's Dark Ages, when Nintendo had no idea what they were doing, and patches were drastic and metas were incredibly strict and stupid. So, let's get started. If you enjoy this series and want to see more in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments and subscribe for more content. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, the first meta is incredibly well known. If you are around during the time Splatoon released, you knew what this was. The Triple Tri Slosher meta. Basically, back then, Tri Slosher had increased range compared to what it does now, which means it could easily outrange a lot of the short range shooters which were what was pretty common at the time. It's also worth noting that on the game's launch, many weapons and many kits were completely absent, so there wasn't too much variety. tri Slusher had absolutely dominating matchups, with burst bombs being quite easy to use with Subsaver. This was so oppressive that you could find pretty much any Splattuber at the time making videos about it. It was pretty interesting to see meta being talked about by pretty much everyone. This patch would be dominated by tri Slosher and especially Triple Tri. Tri was not only a great main weapon, but Armor was an amazing special, which, by the way, had a weird different sound effect at the time. Armor basically had more invincibility because removing Armor had an animation, and while that animation was happening, you could not be damaged. Additionally, Ink Armor didn't have any piercing damage, so for example, if you got sniped by a charger, you would completely maintain your full HP and barely be knocked back. Needless to say, it was pretty broken. The main thing to counter this would end up being the Rapid Blaster, as Rapid is the best weapon in the game at dealing with armor at this time, as well as mines and bomb rush being great at removing it. Rapid was pretty much the same thing, but with a slightly larger radius and a 180p bomb rush. At this time, there were a few other things in the meta. Inkjet had a humongous hitbox, though the shots did travel slower, making it incredibly easy to use and very powerful. Because of this, we saw a good bit of Tenetech and the N-Parry dualies, which, in this case, N-Parry was used more for Inkjet spam as it had a much lower points for special. We also saw a little bit of Junior, though it became pretty outclassed by Tri, and a bit of Firefin, though it became pretty outclassed by Rapid. Overall, this meta wasn't great. There was a lot of fighting happening due to how powerful tri Slasher was, but the main weapon was so incredibly broken and armor and jet were so incredibly better than every other special in the game that it was overall just way too drastic. This brings us to Splatoon's very first patch, something that dropped only a few days after the game released, version 1.1.2. Now, I should mention that this patch did not affect the meta. Pretty much everything I said applies to this patch as well. The only main changes are that the end parry dualies get lower points for special and Tenetech gets higher points for special which means T-Tech is a bit worse at inkjet spamming and is a bit more used for the main weapon, while Dooley's, which have very slow rolls at the time and less range than splatter shots, ended up being more for inkjet spam. Cry was also given an additional 30 points for special, which didn't matter whatsoever. Patch 1.2 came out shortly after, which had some nice buffs, mostly quality of life related, and the main one being that chargers got a little bit better, since they got their old charge times brought back, since Splatoon 2 increased it for Splat Charger and E-Leader by 4 frames, and it also gave Baller a pretty substantial damage buff. However, outside of these, and the dualies being given their extra range for higher points for specials, not too much changed. It was a lot of important changes, but again, nothing that would shift the meta. However, skipping up to patch 1.3.0, which dropped on September 7, 2017, Nintendo would finally kill tri Slosher to end the meta, not completely ruining it from usage, but they went a bit overboard with the damage nerf. Tri would eventually, over the course of many patches, be brought back to a really good state, but as of right now, this is the worst tri Slosher ever was. However, despite this good news, patch 1.3 was potentially the worst balance patch ever, and it already starts with Ray. This is where Stingray got its laser beam on the outside. This patch added it, as well as giving it longer duration. This patch also attempted to fix Splashdown, which gave it many notable buffs. Inkstorm would also get a super crazy buff, increasing the radius by a large degree, making it very extreme. This would also come with reducing the points for special on many Inkstorm weapons, which ended up making things way too drastic. Inkjet would finally get its reductions, and so would Armor, giving damage piercing, 
reducing the invulnerability, and for Inkjet, reducing the size and increasing the hurtbox. However, the main change would be Baller. It already got some great HP changes, but now it got the damage and radius changes, which made it insanely powerful, and thus 1.3 would be defined by Baller. So, while the triple try meta might have died down, it ended up getting replaced with a far worse meta. As you can see from the weapons in this comp, taken from Pangit, which shows a match between STDX, one of the best teams at the time against a top JP team, there were a total of four Stingrays and three Ballers. This was the new meta, Ballers and Rays. Stingray would primarily be used on both regular Charger and the vanilla machine as there weren't too many good ray options at the time and machine was pretty extreme. As for ballers, the main usage of those would be coming from Aerospray, the RG1 specifically having incredibly good painting capability, and a little bit of L3, though 52 and Luna Blaster did also see some use. This meta was pretty much entirely defined by the extremity of those specials. Stingray kills so unbelievably fast that it's a humongous threat. Running two or three of them in a comp isn't even that major a downside, even in zones. As for Baller, it's pretty much unstoppable and the explosion is very lethal, which means it controls space unbelievably easily just by existing. During this time, we still saw some experimentation. Splatter shots would start to go to the vanilla splatter shot. Due to some issues with the net code and how it handled splashdown, canceling it was kind of dependent on connections, so in some cases, splashdown just wouldn't die and be invincible. This would be something that would be patched a long time later, but it's worth noting for the next meta. Additionally, burst bombs were really strong, as sub saver could stack with them very easily, meaning just running one main and three subs of sub saver would allow you to have triple burst bombs. This meta overall is pretty much no one's favorite, and Nintendo seek to replace it pretty quickly, to varying levels of success. On October 10th, 2017, patch 1.4 would release. This would be a patch note that would focus on main weapons, and oh boy, did it focus on main weapons. It gave a lot of important buffs, but to go over some of the main ones, Zap got made quite a little bit faster. Atri Nozzle Nose got its shot velocity and a few other quality of life changes. Clash Blaster got its extra radius size. Dynamo and a lot of the other rollers got some major quality of life changes. Same for the brushes and chargers and e-leaders in terms of painting, damage, and more, most of these as a result of baller nerfs. Splatlings with some more mobility speeds, duelies with less end lag after dodge rolls, but the main one would be the Brellas. Both Tenebrella and regular Brella would get some amazing, insane buffs, and while a lot of them were needed, the ones for the Brellas went really overboard which would lead to a very interesting meta. Also, while this bug was patched about a week after the patch dropped, they accidentally made Brellas able to shoot and shield at the exact same time. Also, if you're curious, yes, this also worked with Tenebrella, and I honestly think this might have inspired Nintendo to make Undercover Brella, but of course that's just speculation. It's also worth noting in terms of nerfs that Stingray was barely toned down, while Machine got a sizable painting nerf as well as Aerospray, so they mostly focused on reducing special output. Bubble Blower was introduced, but the special was so new and early that people didn't really focus on it too much. But don't worry, it'll definitely make a return in the next patch. The main thing to be nerfed was Baller, which would finally bring an end to the major Baller meta for quite some time. And so, with the extreme Brella nerfs giving it its speed, mobility, and most importantly its shield HP back, one that has not been toned down over time yet, like it has in the future. Brella right now has a ton of damage multipliers to allow weapons like blasters, buckets, and chargers to counter it. Back then, that simply didn't exist. So making Brella a brawler made it an insanely heavy meta weapon. In Japan, there would be two to three Brellas in comms, and in the Western scene, nobody would use it. Because it was a new weapon class, as well as another weapon becoming very strong that was common, the Brella meta that existed in Japan didn't exist much in the Western scene. But it's worth noting that even though there's not too much footage of it, Brellas were extremely common in Japan, with two to three of them being ran in many team comms. The Western scene had a bit of a different approach. There was a good bit of variety and experimentation with all of the main weapons that got buffed, but the main things that were present were a lot more bomb defense, plenty of stingrays mainly with the V machines and chargers like in the previous patch, and burst bombs. People would take full advantage of the improved splashdown, as well as the bug that prevented it from being shot down, as well as try slosher with sub saber to have a ton of heavy burst bombs that you could use. 
By using your burst bombs and then pressing armor or splashdown, you basically got a mini burst bomb rush that did incredibly high damage. And because splashdown couldn't be killed and armor was still very strong, it gave people a lot of survivability and poking power. So with Brella being inconsistent in terms of latency, as well as being really uncommon since it's a new weapon class and not many people decided to pick it up, ultimately led to the Western scene being much more of a burst bomb V-Shot Tri Slasher meta. It is worth noting though, as time went on, more and more Stingrays would be common, especially on certain maps. Port Mackerel is probably the main example where you can see here, even on zones, there are five Stingrays in this comp, with the other weapons being primarily used to paint for specials. Ultimately, the Splatoon patches of the early days were not great, and there was a ton of extreme things in the meta. However, because the game was so new, people didn't really have anything super optimized, and people were very willing to experiment, so it wasn't all the time that you would have to deal with this extreme meta. It was overall still a pretty interesting time, but it's good to see that Nintendo would get better at patches in the future, as this is the last of the super extreme ones that they did. But I hope you found this look back to the past interesting, and I hope you're looking forward to part 2, where we tackle a bunch of different fighting metas in the 2.0s. Thank you for watching.